Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Oh yes, here we come again with our second lesson that follows the introductory part of cell division in which we are now focusing on mitotic cell division. Please remember that we looked at the cell cycle before, what is needed before the cell starts to divide, and we also looked at the interface as one of the components in the cell cycle, a very important part. So this time around we are not focusing on interface because we are done with it, though it is a requirement for mitotic cell division. So when we talk of mitosis, we are looking at what happens in the nucleus, what happens in the chromosomes. So like I said again before in the previous lesson, we cannot continue mixing up these terms. That cell division is the same as nuclear division, then what about cytokinesis? So division of the cell, therefore, is the overall observation would make. Meaning that we are looking at what exactly happens inside before we actually see the cell splitting. So a few things we are looking at today, one, that we need to remember that cells contain chromosomes. And we looked at this previously, the structure of the chromosome, the components, the design, what it carries, and to where. Taking us objective number two, like we just said, this has to be handed over. Describing the main stages of mitosis. Oh, mitosis. So when we look at the background image, it's taking us through components as if if I started from here, then I would go around, move, move up to when I reach here. Guess what happens? Choop. Cell splits. Check where the laser is. I started from here, here I move, and up to when I finally appear here. But the question is, what about these other small dots? Remember, these are false images. This is not the actual representation of the cell. But it is a false image in 3D trying to show us a picture of what actually happens inside that we cannot see. So how can we describe what happens at each of these stages until we finally reach here? The shall we remain this small, or we also have to get big look at, like this one? and then move over another cycle again? Is this what we actually looked at as the cell cycle? Start from here and come back to it. So if cells are to finally split, do they split the same way? Now we need to start asking, how was my S1 biology? Plant and animal cells, cell wall, like a box. So it's like get a balloon, put it in the box, and so the box becomes the cell wall and then the balloon becomes the cell membrane, then the water in the balloon becomes the cytoplasm. If you tied inside a small beard, Murakas, then that would be a cell. So it means, therefore, that I can get a plant cell by getting an animal cell and put it inside the box. Think about it. Hard box, rigid cell wall, balloon, cell membrane, softer, bendable, and stuff like that. Now, if these cells are to divide, how shall I divide the box? Will I get a knife and cut it? So what exactly happens is our last objective. Are we able to make the difference between those? Which takes us to one that we need to remind ourselves of a few terminologies. Except chromosome, how long, by average, because remember they have variable sizes. Chromosome sits from 20, number one up to 23 in a human karyotype. We looked at some time back. The length of the chromosome determines how much info it carries. So it's variable, and so it's going to be the strand of the DNA that is locked within. So we have the centromere, the sister chromatides, so we do not have brothers, 
duplicating, attached by the central mayor here, and once this has happened, then we now refer to it as a chromosome. Something we need to note here, that it is so important to note that it is very common, like the way we always give people names that do not belong to them, accidentally. You want to say Sarah, you say Sandra. You say Sandra, you want to say Sandrine. And stuff like that. The same applies to these terms. That it is easy to misuse the terms chromatide and chromosome. Remember, we go back here. A chromosome compo is composed of chromosomes. I mean, sorry, I repeat. Chromosomes contain chromatides. So those are the structural components. Centromere, centrosome. Remember that these are proteins that put the structures together. Here at this location, we do not have so much to carry as very important gene or components. So we talk of locus, loci, positions of genes. They are around these areas and here, but not here. No, 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 no. So you have them here. Spindles and microtubules, also referred to as spindle fibers in cells like the way you hang clothes, and then you have these wires, and then you put clothes on, and then they start moving as they dry. If you want to move them because you need a position to put other clothes, exactly the strings and the clothes back home as you wash and dry your clothes. This is it when cells are dividing. They prepare their threads along which to divide. So, don't confuse centromere and centriol and centrosome because of their similar spelling, as in the number and similarity in the letters present is where the similarity comes in and some kind of central, 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 and then the last suffixes kind of bring up the difference. So be very careful when you're referring to those. Central mayor here, centrioles, here we go. And then you also have the centrosomes. Keep the terms clear in your mind because you write them wrongly, your scientific statement loses meaning. Remember, in science, as long as what you mention does not refer to anything we know, we have some bit of fair kind of, I say, yeah, since this word does not refer to any other and we have ever known, then it's okay, we can mark it because it does not bring any conflict of understanding of the terminology. Now that's the trick teachers use when you see them giving you a mark, even when the spelling is wrong. It's because that term you've written does not make any direct reference to anything. But don't take advantage of that. So, what exactly happens once we reach mitosis? Growth has taken place, DNA has replicated, we have checked and we have proofread mass production of the textbooks. We start the writing, they edit, they proofread, off we go, factory, multiply. This takes us to one interesting and very important thing I want everyone to pay attention to and focus on. This represents a section of cells going through the process of mitotic division. So I'm not saying cell division, mitotic division. So we should be in position, therefore, one, using a pencil and clear paper, make a drawing of an image as seen under electron microscope or as seen under light microscope. You know those words, you know those equipments. But what do we need when people ask us to draw? Size? Is this big enough? Two, what about proportionality? You draw someone and you find that the ear is bigger than the head. What about the labels? Should they crisscross each other? What if one assumes that, okay, the label came and hit here and then bounced back? What are the good features of a science drawing? Am I able to look at an image here and zoom in, look at the slide, 
and extract this and bring it here. That given a pen and pencil, can I draw this cell? So when they say, draw a simple diagram to show what actually happens during prophase, the first stage in mitosis. While it is very common for students to always be talking about mitosis and they start with interface, no, that's scientifically wrong. It's a preparation stage for mitosis. So they ask you about mitosis, start with prophase. Off we go. This is the appearance of the cell during prophase. But what exactly do we see in prophase? Do we still talk about chromatin? When it condenses and becomes sister chromatides that are now visible under light microscope, we should be able, therefore, to use our simple microscopes back at school to be able to see exactly what is inside here. So this is a simple cell prepared from the lab. But how do we draw it out as we look through the microscope? In the next session, that's what we should be able to look at. Prepare the cells, have them, have the microscope, load, and then you should be able to have it projected right away onto your screen, and then you're able to see it. So we look at the changes. The centrosomes move to opposite poles, so they are migrating. You have them here. Before, we don't have them because we are not dividing. The wires, supercoiling, fitting within the nucleus, but when supercoiling continues and it coils and then condensation comes in, we are able to see our chromatin this time visible as X-shaped. And it changes the name. Sister chromatides that are actually part of a chromosome. The nuclear membrane is broken down and starts to disappear. Boo -boo -boo -boo. Goes away. And check the dashed lines would be representing the disappearance. It therefore means that one, an annotation, draw and then give some few descriptions per label. I don't need to write a text after this. Promise me you, if I was marking your work and I found this, I said, oh, the best I can ever come across. So everything is contained in features of the diagram, the skill to draw, ability to annotate, you need all those. But what do we go to next? If that is how prophase appears, what is the next phase that follows? Here we go. Are we able to find similarity between this cell that is having a focus on and what we have drawn out? Have we spread out the fibers? Could this be the other proteins the cell was manufacturing before we actually got out of interface? Yeah, kind of, yeah. The mitochondrion, are they identifiable? Endoplasmic reticula. Are all these structures that we need to multiply so that when we actually divide our cell, each cell is going to have its own share? Think about it. Can we even try to predict what actually would happen in the next stage? So we need to think that if I'm standing up like this and I'm this way, Someone gets a thread, holds me here, and another one holds me here by the arms, and they pull me straight to the left and to the right until I start crying. And they say, no, we are not stopping. You're under training. We have to stretch. So I keep stretching. What is likely to happen? Would my arm fall off? Would this fall off? What if the line of weakness was around here? What would happen? Can we base on what we have here on the image and predict what is likely to happen to this cell? Let's think. You have an X. What if it was just like this? And then I'm pulling this way, and then I'm pulling this way. Then it is very possible that we would actually have the cell boop, 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 splitting. Meaning that from this point, I can actually tell, you know what? I think I can go ahead and have two cells. Yeah, I think I can. Try it out and see. Are we able to make predictions based on the results we have? 
How many times have you forged results in a lab experiment? Acceleration due to gravity, you swing, 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 swing. Ah, they want about 20 measurements and I've just done 10. I will just follow the pattern. But you also must have that skill. So if the range is this, in this series, then I can continuously add up and fill up my table and the chair will say, wow, the best experiment. Don't try that. It's very dangerous. So, if we look at the amounts and the way they are kind of distributed, I can possibly tell that what is most likely to happen is I'm going to get torn apart, split in the middle, one half. After all, we are having a bilateral symmetry. Cut me into two, then I get two exact halves. So, could it be this? What has exactly happened? We need to think about that. If I check this section, remember, this is an electron micrograph. It can also be a photomicrograph. Photomicrographs are done or taken by a microscope, light microscope. Electromicrographs are taken from an electron microscope, more advanced, with sharp detail, high resolution. Can this be a fair representation of actually what is happening here? Remember, we lost our nuclear membrane. But the question should be why? Why do you remove most of the things in your room if you really want to arrange it very well? Wonderful. Have enough space. Put things together in their right positions. So the continued contraction of these spindles will pull our X-shaped and have it separate. Look. This was initially here, and this was initially here, that initially there, and that initially there. Now they are separate. Remember, this is our DNA content. This is our nuclear content. And check what is happening to the parts of the components. And towards the end, which we refer to as tail phase, again, the photomicrograph zoomed in is giving us a fair representation here in our simple drawing. Have we missed anything? What's resurfacing? Our nuclear membrane that broke down is now reforming. Much of the structures that were actually duplicated tend to be folding on one end of the side. So if this is one nucleus and this is another one, right, so what does this mean? Can that tell us that we are likely to be heading into producing two cells? But how? It's still one cell. So wrapping it up, every time you meet people, all you need is to have a conversation. You don't just meet people and don't talk. You say something. So can we use that component to be able to remember what actually this is summed up into? That's one of my favorites. Smiles, dressing. Could he be saying, wow, you look so smart? You should be saying that I'm smart in my lab coat. Why not? I also deserve one. Maybe the next time we should actually be, huh? you know, once in a while, fix it and let's have a talk. So before we go any further to have this up, can we try to figure out where these words are coming from? Tell me, what do you think? People meet and talk. Mm -hmm. And then after that? Do they keep meeting? Do they keep holding hands? Or they part ways? So this takes us to that. That people will be represented by prophets. And then metaphase for meeting. And then we do have anaphase and, and talk through your telophase. How do you wrap it up? How do you wind up? So, mitotic nuclear division, there you go. Meet someone and talk. But the question is, is that all? Do we finally have the two cells? 
Is there something we are missing out here? What exactly is happening? How do we differ from plant cells? So, there is something else we need to look at. We've just divided the nucleus, but we are still within the same box. You just got your job, you're still at home, you haven't got your own house. Time to pack and go. So finally we get this cell dividing. The cytoplasmic content has to be shared. All the things that were duplicated before, yeah, part ways sharing the inheritance. But when does this occur? Is it the same as it happens in plants? Do we divide in the same way as plants do? When exactly does this take place? So we have that thin line, that gray picture. Maybe during interface or towards the end, or they all occur at the same time. Now we have to ask ourselves, is it true that every time cells divide, they actually have to completely separate like we saw before? Or like we are seeing here now? And there are certain cells that the nucleus will continue to divide, but the cell still remains one, and we refer to that as multinucleated cell. One huge cell, a lot of nuclei. Remember at the beginning we said referees have been moving from one person to linesmen. Now this time, Champions League, I think. I know you are football fans. Premier League, and here in East Africa and other countries, we actually have linesman left, linesman right, referee in the middle. Champions League, no joke, no cheating. Goal post linesman, goal post linesman, right linesman, left linesman, and the referee in the middle. They are all controlling what's going on on the pitch. Sometimes cells divide and they keep the nuclei within one cell, and so we refer to them as multinucleated. Examples, muscle cells, go back to histology. As we move and check exactly what cytokinesis refers to as the last part of the cell cycle, in which case we now have animal cell, plant cell. A wall will have to create in the middle. The rest of the structures that have actually not been used and are not needed, like the fibers, will be used to build up a barrier. Some of you stay home and you have a house after you've married, then your father say, okay, what else can I do? I'm going to split my sitting room into two sitting rooms. One is yours, another one is going to be mine. So the house stays one. You know the two in one houses? There we go. And others say, take off with your things and move away. So division of the cell into two daughter cells, as cytogenesis, will occur around the same time when telophys is taking place. And here we go to put it all together as a sum up. I'm not going through all this. We have already talked about it. When plants and animal cells are dividing, the way and the process of division is slightly different. So we would look at animal cells as a good family where every time a child is born and the wealth is enough, they say, get your share, go to another plot and build there. For plant cells, maybe the plot is one, and you say, okay, three huge rooms. Every time a child is born, they split the room. They put in the cupboards. They partition. And exactly what do we have here? But the cell is going to divide. At the end of the day, nuclei will divide. Here we have, and a plate, a cell plate, which we do not have. Here we have a cleavage, press a yellow banana, and separates. Here it's different. So check through all these, have a snapshot and take them, and then see the major differences we actually look at when we are having plant and animal cells dividing, which now wraps it up with uh, this clip we are going to watch.
Remember, we are wrapping this up again because we looked at it before. Follow the captions. Read very carefully as we wrap this up. That's the mitosis we're talking about. As it rolls through, Don't miss out anything, because I'm not going through this over and over again. So with this, let's wrap this up with a section of mitosis and see how it rolls. They're only going to be playing from now up to where we have plant cells dividing. So let's check how it rolls. So you have the stages. And what exactly happens in every stage, like we said? Remember, we've gone through all this before, so now you should be in position to follow up. The movement, do they actually migrate? Are we seeing them moving? What is the right positions? Remember the other threads we're talking about, where you hang your clothes. What happens to the duplicated chromosomes? And here we move and then they separate. Taking us through and then stretching and pudding until we finally have that division line as the metaphase plate, after which the threads are going to pull. So the individual chromosomes are separate from one another. So much energy is needed and that's why interface is needed. And so we now have our cell having a cleavage, and off we go. A constriction. That's what we call cytokinesis in animal cells. New cells are formed, structures reappear, the nuclear membrane forms, and there we have where two daughter cells completely identical. Now as we wrap this up, like we said, the process of division is now complete. So with that, we come to the end of our session, and we hope that we've been able to pick it up and be able to have the whole process understood and the purpose for division. Thank you so much for today, and off we are at the end of our session, essentially looking at how cells do divide. Thank you so much.